I spend a lot of hours every single week editing photos, and I've been saying for a while that I want a computer to just take over my job, or at least all the hard parts, the laborious stuff, because I really don't need to spend as much time as I do, because artificial intelligence can handle a lot of it. So today we're going to talk about Luminar AI, which promises to greatly reduce the amount of time I'm going to spend on each photo. This is a sponsored video, so it's not going to be a review. I just want to show off all of the cool features that this new program has. By the way, it is brand new. If you've tried Luminar 4, a lot of the stuff in here is very new and very different, so you can't really compare them side by side. This is meant to sit on its own as its own app. It's designed from top to bottom to make editing easy and fast, so you just don't spend so long stuck in your programs. You can spend more time out there shooting. So let's start by taking a look at it. Uh, I've loaded in a bunch of photos that we shot when we were able to travel this year, which was uh, less than we usually would. But Luminar AI has either a catalog view or a single image edit. So you could just pop one thing in there or handle a whole catalog worth of stuff. So I've just got random things we're gonna play with. And before we dig into specific tools, let's just, here's a preview of something that you could do. Here's a ski photo from Vancouver that is already pretty nice, but in just a few minutes messing around, this is what I got. And this is just moving sliders. I didn't go and do anything by hand. There's nothing especially custom here. But if we flip back and forth, you can see that's a pretty nice improvement for almost no effort. And this one, this is a pretty nice photo already. It doesn't look like it needs much, but with just one or two clicks, you can do something pretty impressive. This isn't typically how we'd edit our photos. This is a little more artistic, but just seeing how far you can push it. Another cool feature that'll be coming soon it's not released as of recording, but is you're gonna be able to see the reflections of the clouds in the water in the photo without doing anything manually yourself. The app will handle it all through artificial intelligence. So let's start by looking at how I did this one with just one click. I'm gonna reset all of the adjustments. And all I did is come here into the templates section and it not only suggests some different templates for this photo, but has tons that you can choose from. So I think this one I used Toscana. And there you go, literally one click. The whole, the whole thing happens all at once. Oh, crazy, I just realized the moon is there. All right, look, just for fun, I wanna dive a little further. Let's just play with the creative mode, augmented sky, and let's add a bigger moon. All right, that's more how I remember it looking. Okay, anyway, let's do something real. In reality, I'm not usually trying to make a photo look different than what was taken. I'm just trying to improve on what we have. So the first place I like to go, if we go up to the edit tab over here, is enhance AI. This is usually safe to do on virtually every photo, is just grab the accent AI slider and just bring it up. Even, I mean, even cranked, even at 100%, like it's maybe a little more than I'd want, but you can bring this pretty high and it's intelligently looking at the shadows and highlights and balancing all of them in a way that I find to be very like safe and pleasing. It, it doesn't tend to break the image. And then there's also sky enhancer built in here as well. And that will bring the sky blues a little more into the image, it'll recover them a bit. That's too much, we can see a little vignetting there. So, uh, you know, probably keep it around 30%. And as always, we can use the before and after tools to just remind ourselves where we've come. And this is when an image is like coming to life for me. I really like to see this. Now, another thing I'm likely to do on every photo is that they have these light tools, which are all of your basics. Like these are the standard things you might adjust on every photo in traditional editing apps. So I'm usually still gonna tweak my exposure and my white balance a little bit for the photo. So in this case, I wanna cool it down a bit. Some of those yellows are a little too intense. Um, but that's about it. I mean, there's also the smart contrast, which uh, does an intelligent job of boosting the contrast without affecting the colors of the image so much. So I can, I can give that a little, little boost there. And so far we've been in the essentials tab over here. And these are kind of more traditional editing tools that you might be used to. And Luminar AI is moving away from like a tool-based system to more of a solutions-based system. That's how they like to describe it. So it's fun to dig into this creative section, see some of the stuff it can do. One that I really like is sun rays. So this adds volumetric lighting. And you can see, I'm gonna move our light source into the middle here and just start to turn it on. Hey, there we go. Bring that amount up a little bit. And you can go as far as you want. Uh, this is much too far. Basically, uh, no slider should ever be at 100. But as we move it around, you can see that it understands the 3D world here. So you can move it behind, like this is so cool. As you move it behind the rocks, it reacts the way that the actual atmosphere would, um, that even the lensing of your camera would a little bit. So you, you wanna look for, here, let's turn it off for a second. Naturally, we wanna find where is the light really coming from in this photo, and you can see it's very clearly all coming from this side, uh, from the right of the image towards the left of the image. So we're gonna turn it back on. That's where the sun needs to be. I'm gonna place it out of frame. 
you can see it's like softening up the image a little, just makes it feel a little, um, it's both like more dramatic and softer at the same time. And if we already forgot, this is why AI is exciting. You can't just Photoshop this kind of volume stuff. The fact that it automatically hides itself, like you have to figure that out for yourself if you're drawing it in a program like Photoshop, it doesn't make any sense. A computer knows much better at how this 3D world operates. And I'm just gonna play with this for a second. Let's see where we can take it. And there we go. A minute later, we got something pretty nice. It's ready for Instagram. All right, let's go back and try out a few more of these features. Here's some cool fog that we came across while we were in Portugal. And I think it's a good opportunity to show off the volumetric fog that is available inside the Atmosphere AI tool. So if I turn it on, right now I'm gonna use Haze. And uh, so you can see there's a real fog going on in the background. Uh, this isn't all synthetic, there's some reality here. And first I'm gonna turn it up. We're not really gonna see it yet because it's blending in with the other Haze. But as I move this depth slider, you can basically see it's like creeping forward physically in reality. It's going from behind the hills, behind the car, to gradually in front of the car, and you can move it back and forth. So the Atmosphere AI actually understands the relationship of objects within the photo and is intelligently 3D processing it without a depth map. I mean, it's just looking at the photo and understands the stuff. So let's push this photo a little further. Let's crack open like all of the AI tools at once. There's Composition AI. This will crop everything automatically for you. It'll see things like vignetting and try to remove that a little, try to straighten the image. Let's go to Enhance AI. I love Accent as always, just gives it a nice subtle boost. I'm gonna open up Structure AI and uh, you can see that it adds this kind of like high radius sharpening, except intelligently. What I really like this sort of tool for is something like um, YouTube thumbnails. I'll always add exactly this kind of effect just to make them much more visible when they're small. That's what you mostly want to use it for. If you're viewing the image big, you don't really need this structure as much. It can be a little unflattering. But when you're viewing something from farther away, adding this can really make it pop at a small size. All right, we don't have any sky to change in here. Uh, sure, let's turn the atmosphere on just for fun. By the way, atmosphere can remove some contrast. Don't be afraid to do that sometimes. Everything doesn't need to be super punchy. It's pretty crazy that as I add the sun rays, it just looks like it's coming through the tree back there, like, and actually lighting him. I mean, I don't wanna turn it up too much to give it away too much. But yeah, I can turn it up and down. I, I like this though, it actually feels like there's a light poking through. What else, we got some drama we could turn up a little. If we open up moods, this basically lets you load in LUTs, which you might have purchased some externally, but there's a whole bunch that just come with Luminar AI already. So you can basically apply one of these built-in filters. Keep it subtle, a little more contrast. By the way, keep in mind that all of this is still very early. I am using a beta version, so things in here will change by the time you use Luminar AI. I'm just playing with what's here now, but there will be some changes, especially in terms of performance by the time it launches. All right, to test out some portrait tools, let's look at a photo of my wife, Anya, here. Follow her on Instagram at Anya B. I mean, it's the best place to see the photography we do together because she posts way more often than I do. So in the portrait tools, we've got Face AI, which does really smart stuff. Like it finds the faces in the image and I'll crank this so you can see it, it relights them. So this is especially cool if there's a group shot because everybody in the image can individually have their faces lit. And once you've detected the face, you can start to do interesting things that you could slightly slim it just a little bit. In Skin AI, you can remove some basic like blemishes and just clean things up a little, very subtly. You know, I would never turn it here. Let's crank it. There, you can see it over smooths, but it's still detecting the mouth and the eyes. You can see what it's doing. So you'd never use it at 100. I mean, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna turn to like maybe 18, 19. And there's also the body tool. And this basically can shape and sculpt the body subtly using artificial intelligence. Again, this isn't something you'd wanna push very far, but it finds the people inside the image. And as you move it, you can make people different sizes. But what's nice is if you copy the adjustments, you can paste them on something else and it will detect the person in the other photo and apply the exact same adjustments and you don't need to mask them on anywhere. It'll just do the same thing to every person it finds in the scene. One of my favorite features and something we do all the time in many of our photos is replace the sky. This takes a long time in traditional editors. You have to manually mask everything. And a photo like this is especially hard because you've got little holes in between all the flowers. It's it's really difficult and time consuming. And if you think of movies like Mad Max Fury Road, it's famous for its lack of visual effects, but they are doing a ton of sky replacements everywhere. It's really common and can really help a photo. So in just a few clicks, 
this is what I was able to get. And some tricks if you want to blend this in a little bit more. First of all, you want to match the exposure of your sky. So if you kind of flick on the before and after, try to get something that's as similar as you can to the original. So that means things like matching the exposure. So I'm going to bring the sky nice and bright. I'm also going to turn up the haze so that it's not, you know, it's not way more saturated in blue than the rest of the image. And make sure that the blur levels kind of match what's going on in the background. Like it shouldn't be perfectly sharp. So I'm just gonna try to kind of balance that focus a bit. And there we go, quick on and off. Now I can see it's eating into the flowers a little bit. So if I turn up close gaps, you can see here, it fixes those holes. And uh, there we go. I think we have something pretty believable. Now let's just do a few more adjustments, make this whole photo look cool. Other reasons I've been really excited about artificial intelligence, and I've, I've been talking about this a lot on the podcast. So you can listen there if you wanna hear more. But this is where hardware is going too. So things like the new iPhone having more neural engines inside of the A14 processor or how they're moving to Apple Silicon. So now all of the new Macs are gonna better support machine learning and AI. Or if you're on the PC side, you can go out and buy a big beefy Nvidia card. And those GPUs are amazing at crunching artificial intelligence algorithms. So it's sort of like the more you invest into this type of a workflow, the bigger payoffs you're gonna have down the road. Luminar AI is brand new software. So we're just seeing the beginning potential of what you can do with your photos when you apply AI to it. All right, moved a few sliders. Let's take a look at the before and after. And holy cow, <laughs> it's barely recognizable. I mean, it was already a nice photo, but you can see what doing things like bringing out the shadows, fixing the white balance, adding the sun, like it really has a lot more pop to it. All right, let's play around a little bit more. By the way, if you use sky replacements as often as I do, you can also buy sky packages, either through Luminar or third parties, and then load in those sky photos to be your backgrounds. I'd recommend it. It's really useful to have a whole bunch of them so you're not reusing the same ones over and over. And there really are some deeper tools. If you're used to traditional editing platforms like I am, you can still dig into things like HSL and shadows and highlights. There are tools in here to do real professional stuff, but you don't need them most of the time. That's the nice thing is you can just apply the basics and really quickly get to where you wanna be. And this is showing off a really light edit where you're just adding a bit of punch. You're not messing with the colors. Everything still feels very natural. Just gives it a little more pop. Let's go crazy with this one. All right, that's pretty fun. Oh, there's one slider I used on this image that I just wanna show you guys how it works because it was very helpful. Remove color cast. So this could tell that the snow was way too blue because of the shade uh, along with her pants. I mean, all of this is supposed to be white. It's just blue because snow often turns blue. So by cranking up remove color cast, I get basically pure white. I mean, I, I <laughs> this is so helpful. Usually I mask all of this stuff out in our ski photos. This just does it automatically. Let's also look at a studio example. So this is shot, you know, with a full studio lighting and uh, all the good equipment. Still use accent as always. Needs to be warmed up a bit. It's too cool. We still got professional tools like erase. So this can take out some of these spots we've got from the sensor. We'll jump into our skin tools and the face. A few clicks later, we got a nice portrait here. Okay, this actually, this turned out way better than I <laughs> expected. I didn't think it was gonna work. By the way, a good final tip is to add just a tiny bit, like one or two on the film grain at the end because that'll just help settle everything together so you don't have different noise on composite elements that you added to the background versus your foreground elements. If you weren't excited about AI going into this, hopefully Luminar AI has convinced you why it's awesome. So you can check out the link in the description below to learn more. And stay tuned, because I'm going to talk about this type of technology a lot more in the podcast. It is the future. We're going to be seeing a lot more of it. And we'll be doing time-consuming manual edits a lot less often. Thanks again for watching, guys. See you in the next video.